Take a look at 5.8Q. It looks quite simple, but it is actually not. Draw the electric field pattern between the two charges A and B as if they were identical in magnitude. That is 5.2 two out of three U marks. But usually people get one mark for this question because they make the mistakes I'm about to show you how to avoid. So let's go ahead and take a look. We have two positive charges, A and B. We are about to draw the electric field pattern between the two charges as if they were identical in magnitude. So let me show you how that will look like. So first things first, we have A right here and here we have B. They are both positive. On a positive charge, the electric field lines, the point outward, right, relative to the sphere itself, the point outwards. And then in a negative charge, that's where they point inward. So here we are expecting something like this. They are pointing outwards from the sphere. So let me just finish drawing these fold lines and I will show you the mistakes that a lot of people make. The mark allocation. Let's talk about the mark allocation. That is where people lose marks, okay? So one mark is for the correct direction of the field lines. So in a positive charge, the field lines are pointing away from the sphere. And then in a negative charge, they are pointing towards. So if your field lines are pointing away from the sphere, you have one mark. And then the second mark is for the shape of the electric field lines. Obviously, we have two positive charges. They should repel, as you can clearly see in our sketch. So there's another mark for the mere fact that you were able to show that they are repelling because they are light charges. Light charges repel and unlike charges attract. So that's two out of three. And then the third mark, no field lines are crossing each other. So take a look at this field line for instance, this one right here and this one. They're not touching. They're not crossing each other. So if they're crossing each other, you will lose a mark because of that. And another criteria we have, take a look at these field lines. They don't go inside the spheres. If you have one field line that goes inside the sphere, then you're going to lose another mark. So you have to be aware of those things so that you can get all three marks. That is 5.2. Let's take a look at 5.3. Calculate the number of electrons that are added or removed to give a charge of plus 5 nanocoulombs. We have the charge, 5 nanocoulombs. We know the charge of an electron. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 and we are looking for the number of electrons which formula connects these three variables well n is equal to the charge divided by the charge of an electron uh, well other books will say that q is equal to n multiplied by the charge of an electron of which if you rearrange you end up with n being equal to the charge divided by the charge of an electron. So in our case, the charge is 5 times 10 to the minus 9. That is what nano columns mean, times 10 to the minus 9. Everything divided by the charge of an electron. The charge of an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. This is equal to... 3.125 times 10 to the power 10 electrons. So in order to have a charge of 5 times 10 to the minus 9 columns, you need to add or remove 3.125 times 10 to the power 10 electrons. So there we go. That is 5.3. Let's take a look at 5.4. So in 5.4, we are supposed to calculate the magnitude and direction of the net electric field strength at point C. This is out of six marks. So let's go ahead and take a look. We have our point C right here. From A to C, it is 20 millimeters. 
and then from c to b it's unknown right but take a look at this from a to b is 80 meters so c to b should be 60 meters right uh, that will be easy to see if we just apply a bit of mathematics right x plus 20 is equals to 80 so x should be 60 millimeters so we have the distance from a to c and the distance from c to b so how do we then calculate the magnitude and direction of the net electric field strength at point c we have to take point c as if we had a positive charge right so let's assume that at point c we had a positive charge now let me show you something let's concentrate on a and c first if we have a positive charge at c a and c will be repelling each other so we are gonna have a pushing c to the east so this is the electric field at c due to a now let's take a look at c and b now let's take a look at c and b if we had a positive charge at c b and c would be repelling each other so the electric field at c due to b is to the west b is pushing c to the west this is going to be the electric field at c as a consequence of b so now that we have this nice vector diagram e net the net electric field will be equals to if we take east as positive then this will be the electric field at as a consequence of a minus the electric field as a consequence of b that is how we answer this question you must start with a diagram similar to this and then you will know what e net is going to be so e net is equal to ea minus eb but we know that the electric field is given by k q divided by r squared so we're going to use this formula to calculate ea and eb let's go ahead and do that e net will be equal to k is a constant that is 9 times 10 to the power 9 and the magnitude of our charge a is 4 times 10 to the minus 9 everything divided by r squared r is 20 millimeters and we use meters in physics and not millimeters so let's go ahead and convert that to meters we we do that by dividing with 1000 so we're gonna have 20 divided by 1000 squared so that is the electric field at c due to the charge a minus the electric field due to the charge b it will be 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by the charge of our sphere b that is 6 times 10 to the minus 9 everything divided by the distance between c and b that is 60 millimeters divided by 1000 everything squared this is equals to 75,000 newtons per column this is positive and we are taking direction to the east as positive so it will be 75,000 newtons per column to the east so there we go we have the net electric field at point c